everyone, I'm Rachel Lowe from Physiopedia. Today I'm having just a little chat here with Archie Hinchcliffe. Hi Archie. Hello Rachel. Hi, um, so Archie is the author of one of the books that we're using on our Managing Children with Cerebral Palsy course. So I was just going to have a little chat to Archie today. She's got a, an a wealth of experience in, in working with individuals with cerebral palsy and um, has written a book. So we're just having a little chat with Archie today. So Archie, I was just wondering if you could introduce yourself to everyone and let everyone know a little bit about the experiences that you've had in your life working with individuals with cerebral palsy. Okay. Um, right. My uh, husband, was a diplomat and we mostly had postings between the Middle East and Africa and I am a Bobath trained physiotherapist and I love my job and I love um, working with children in any country in any place and he very generously um, allowed me to continue my work when we were posted abroad and that's what I did. So, you, so you've done lots of work in Africa and in the middle of the in the Middle East and has it mainly been with children with cerebral palsy or individuals with cerebral palsy? Always, yes. Always, so and if you don't mind me asking how many years of experience is that? Goodness. <laughs> about? Um, about Oh, um, I would say 30 years. Oh, that's great. That's so much experience. Mm. I'm sure there's so much we can learn from you. And you've been very, very generous and written this book called Children with Cerebral Palsy, a manual for therapists, parents and community workers. Um, what's prompted you to write the book? Well, people kept asking me, don't you have books about cerebral palsy in your country? And um, I kept recommending the ones that you you know and I know, um, but somehow they were never appropriate for those countries. They were very much written for people in the UK or Europe, and um, I wanted to write something that was more meaningful for people in the Middle East and and Africa. So that's really what I wrote the book about. So the book aims then to provide knowledge to those people in, in those sort of contexts in the Middle East and Africa. Which can, how, how is that different to our contexts here sort of in the UK or in higher resource countries? Well, one of, the, one of the things that's hugely different, and I don't know how many people are aware of this, but the clinical picture of children with cerebral palsy in Africa and the Middle East is different because the causes of the of the uh, for the the reasons why children have cerebral palsy are different. We have all almost all of our children in in the UK and other um, more northern countries um, have a low birth weight and are very premature. That really doesn't happen so much in Africa and, and maybe less so now in the Middle East, but. Um, the causes in the Middle East are much more to do with um, um, cerebral malaria, meningitis, um, poor mater very poor maternity services for people in rural areas. And so the, the damage that's done is different and the clinical picture is very different. That's interesting. I haven't come across that before. And, you know, we're, we're talking before the course actually starts. So I haven't, I mean, I'm not an expert in cerebral palsy, and I'm looking forward to doing the course and learning all of this. But that's an interesting um, piece of knowledge that I wasn't aware of, actually. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so with your experience, I mean, you had a lot of experience working with individuals with cerebral palsy what are obviously you've written sort of your main knowledge in the book that we're all able to have a read while this course is going on um what are the main pieces of knowledge that you would really like to share with the participants of this course the sort of messages that you'd like to get across to them well they're all therapists and so i think the main um 
the main message I would like to get across is that therapists have a very big responsibility with the children because they are the ones who, who work with the, with the children and their families. And they're the ones who really take responsibility for ensuring that the child doesn't develop contractures and deformities. That's really the biggest thing. And, and secondly, that they are given opportunities to learn to be more independent and do things for themselves. And um, in order to do that, I feel that they must first of all, first and foremost, understand that children with cerebral palsy are completely different to each other. You're not going to find protocols for working with children with cerebral palsy. You have to learn to analyze, to observe and analyze each one. And then from a set of principles, which come in my book, which you can find in my book, from a set of principles, you can determine the treatment, which will be different for each child. I think that's the main message. I think that's such a good message. I think it's not something that um, I've talked about to anyone so far. And the, the message that, you know, everyone, each individual is completely different and there are no protocols, you know, there isn't, you can't come along and say I have this individual you know I have this child with cerebral palsy what's the protocol you really need to be skilled in evaluation and observation is a huge thing isn't it to mm -hmm. to observe the child to observe their situation their caring their caregivers and be able to evaluate them as an individual and not um not as a condition so to speak Absolutely. and then um and then create a management program or some or management sort of you know, program for want of a better word to to help them grow help them grow and help them have a good quality of life so I think that's a really really nice message um, mm -hmm. so no protocols we want you to um, learn how to evaluate and to individualize the the programs that you set for the children with cerebral palsy by looking at what you see in the clinic or in the in the in the home environment wherever you are wherever you're working with that child um, I think that's a really nice message and it does that sort of thing does require clinical reasoning skills and that is quite difficult in some countries where clinical reason isn't necessarily um, well taught or what no I don't want to say well taught I want to say isn't necessarily a priority in therapy um, so yeah, I like that message. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, the other really big, big um, important thing is um, seeing the child in his family because um, there are so many children on each therapist's list in the countries where I've worked that the family have to be given skills um, to handle and manage their child in the right way. And um, you have to get alongside the family. You can't just come in and say, this is what you have to do. You have to say, can you manage this? Is your life, does it allow you to, to fit in between tilling the fields and fetching the water from the well and getting the other children off to school? To, to sit in the right way with your child doing dressing skills or... So make the exercise program part of the child's everyday life rather than giving the mother an extra job of doing, doing exercises. Just make it part of the child's life and make it fun for the child. Give the child a satisfaction in learning to do new things by making it play. I think that's my main message that needs to be got across. You have to get alongside the family and get yeah. alongside the child. Um, it's a very good point, and, and that is something that's been brought up by other people that I've chatted to for this course. So it's nice to hear the same um, piece of knowledge or message coming through from everybody, which is really nice. And I think that isn't just um, for sort of mid, you know the Middle East and African situations that's for all situations isn't it even in the most high resource setting um, in in wherever that's the same the same 
we need to use that same piece of knowledge in the way that we work with the caregivers and in the home environment, in the community environment. Um, so it's, it's a good thing to bear in mind, I think, from the beginning of the course right through to the end of the course, as you talk about through two activities of daily living and play, which we'll cover later on in the course. So, so yeah, some really nice things to bear in mind. Um, so Archie, I, I just want to say again, thank you very much for allowing us to use your book and for writing it for us in the first place to use. Um, it's always very useful for us to um, be able to access these textbooks through the course. It'll only be available for the duration of the course. Um, the publishers have kind Sage Publishing have kindly allowed us to use it for the eight weeks that we'll be running six weeks of the course and then there's another two weeks on the end for you to finish things off. So so thank you for allowing us to use it. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say to everyone just before we end this chat? Oh, I could talk for a long time, but I don't think I should. <laughs> I'd just like to wish everyone um, an enjoyable course and a really rich course to um, to inspire you to work in this wonderful field. I've had such happiness and satisfaction and um, friendships from from work, working in this field. And there are, there are many people out there you'll make contact with and your life will be enriched by it. And I just hope that the course will give you uh, the knowledge and skills to make that happen in, in an enriching way for you. <laughs> Oh, thank you. thank you, Archie. It's been an absolute delight to talk to you. And I have a feeling that you will be an inspiration for many people on this course. So thank you very much. And I hope that you'll be around um, with the course and maybe getting involved. We may see you in the forums. I'm not sure if you'll you'll be able to um, pop in there and just even if you have a look around, there's some great conversations in there. So we look forward to um, we look forward to that. So thank you very much for talking to us today. You're very welcome. <laughs>